20s, the roaring 20s again. Fun facts, everybody get your traditional clothing out because we're getting ready to go square dancing and celebrate 100 years since the Great Depression. Let's bring it back. Let's do another Great Depression for the 2020s. And this is the first official video I've made of the decade. You wanna see last decade's first video? No, you do not. Let me answer that one for you. No, maybe someday, but y'all ain't ready for that. Oh my God, it was bad. But I'm very excited for the tech we should be expecting to come out in the 2020s. Really excited to see what kind of content we make over the whole next decade. I'm so glad we don't have to say teens anymore. Is it 2019? Is it 2019? I'm sick of the debate. Now we can just say 2020, unless some of you say 2020, in which, oh God, you are so wrong. Okay, never mind. The debate's just gonna keep on going. But without further ado, now you get to see our new intro for the new year to go along with all our new profile pictures and cover photos. Let's begin. Huge shout out to Mr. Beats DJ on Twitter. He did last year's intros and outros, and he did a great job with this year's as well. He did them for almost all my channels across the network. If you would like your own intro done by him, feel free to check him out. He didn't even ask me to shout you out. I'm just doing it because he has fair pricing, he's very talented, and he's very adaptable with my schedule. So thank you, Beats DJ, for making the intros much easier on the eyes. I apologize in hindsight. After using that intro over and over again, I realize how blinding it was to a lot of people especially when we're used to dark mode now. Hopefully that appeases the masses a little bit more. You all hate it. Well, okay. Uh, moving on. There are a lot of things we should expect from Apple in 2020, starting with potentially some things we did not get last year that we thought we were going to get. For instance, Bloomberg talked about there being a cheaper two-tweeter HomePod, which never really got followed up on, and Bloomberg's fairly reliable, so I'm really hoping Apple does something with that this year. I would like a more affordable, more compact version of the HomePod, given the current one. Quite expensive, but the sound quality is really good. It desperately needs, though, a more smaller, compact version because in the smart speaker world, those smaller, cheaper ones are the things that sell really, really well. So to see Apple kind of diversify in the smart speaker market, long overdue. Apple didn't do anything with the HomePod except make it cheaper, which, I mean, we all agree that needs to happen, but they also need a smaller version. That's the best way to make it cheaper is to rearrange some hardware. Other things we thought we were going to see in 2019 were AirTags. There were lots of hints to it in the code. There were lots of references to it, but never actually solidified into a product. So let's hope that we get that soon. I'm sure Apple's working on it since they literally gave us the name of it within iOS code. Being able to throw those on your bags or your bikes for easier location tracking. That would be incredible. And if they've come out by now, I deeply apologize. I filmed this on December 17th. I'm on vacation right now. I'm not even here. So if they unveiled them between December 17th and January 1st, I guess cut to this part of the video. Wow, AirTags came out. That's so cool. Why are they so expensive? Do AirTags suck? There, I'll get on YouTube trending now. But also it's going to be really difficult to see how Apple is able to top previous generation products they've already announced that are already still kind of perfect. It's gonna be really hard to make the iPad Pro even better than it already is. We are getting some leaks and rumors about there being maybe a triple camera on the back or maybe it's a time of flight sensor, maybe something to do with the camera, but there's also chit chat of mini LED tech coming to the iPad Pros as well so that you can get the benefits of an OLED display without the cons of an OLED display. You don't want that OLED burn in on your iPad, but Apple still wants to prioritize those inky blacks in that dynamic range, which hopefully mini LED will do and it will approximately cost 90 million dollars so i'm really pumped for the next generation of ipad pros given the last one came out way back in 2018 and it is still so good and so powerful by today's standards that thing was insanely ahead of its time so knowing that apple's more than likely 99 percent going to be refreshing it this year is impressive but honestly they could probably skip this year and no one would really mind that much they're still great ipad os kind of levitated the whole experience but the other apple product they're gonna have a very hard time topping is the apple watch in 2020 if things go according to plan we should be looking at the apple watch series 6 which what are they gonna do with that thing honestly like the series 5 i'm not even wearing it anymore i'm happy with my series 4 because the differences were so small and hard to notice. An always on display is helpful for some people, but in my case, it really wasn't. The battery life wasn't as good as my series four. Whenever I had the always on display on, I know there may be some updates that have fixed that, but still it's not a reason for me to buy a whole new Apple watch just for always on display. When my series four, like the flick of the wrist to view the screen has never been an issue for me. So that's not a really good reason for me to upgrade. Hopefully Apple does something with the series six that makes it worth upgrading, but honestly, it's going to be tough 
because I do not really care about sleep tracking. I know that's everyone's go-to thing. Well, they gotta do sleep tracking. Look, I don't need a watch to tell me I can't sleep very well. With the time to stand thing or how many calories you gotta burn, I can like act on that as it's happening. But if I just wake up the next day and my watch is like, you didn't sleep well last night. I'm like, yeah, no crap. I was awake the whole time. I'm aware of that. So next night, it's gonna be like, well, you should sleep better. <laughs> Try that. Gee, thanks, Apple Watch. Plus, there's already a bunch of third-party sleep tracking apps that basically tell you the exact same thing. They've had sleep tracking on the iPhone that you just put it on the bed and leave it there overnight. It monitors sound and motion and that kind of thing. It's very creepy when you think about it. Probably Facebook is the root of it. I bet Facebook wants a sleep tracking app. But outside of, you know, blood pressure monitoring or glucose monitoring, which could be great breakthrough for those people that need that thing regularly, but I'm not diabetic yet. I may I may get there, but I'm trying to think of something they can add that I would genuinely care about. And the only thing I can think of is like a design upgrade. Again, I know the Series 4 was still fairly recently, but if they made that display bigger and made the bezels even smaller than before, or did some type of redesign on the externals, I don't know what, but it's gonna be really interesting to see if there even is a Series 6. Maybe they don't even bother this year. I don't know. We will find out in September. And I'm also very interested in seeing if Apple is going to bring some of our favorite features features we got out of the 16 inch MacBook Pro, those thinner bezels, the Magic Keyboard, the better internals, are they gonna bring that to the rest of the lineup? Can we please get a Magic Keyboard on the 13 inch MacBook Pro or thinner bezels make it a 14 inch MacBook Pro? I think people are all right if it gets a little bit more thick. And alongside that, there's been talk for many, many years that 2020 could be the year we end up seeing the ARM MacBook. Apple designed custom CPU on the inside, vastly different code architecture for Mac OS as they make the transition to ARM CPU from x86. How will Apple introduce their own custom CPU? Might not happen this year, but for the past like three years now, I've been reading reports that Apple was planning on introducing their own Mac CPU by the end of 2020. So if it does happen this year, it will more than likely be around the October timeframe. So we'll probably know a lot more about it come Worldwide Developers Conference 2020, because that would be a good time to announce that they're making the switch to ARM at a developer conference and everything. So here's hoping for that. I'm really hoping for like the return of the 12-inch Mac. MacBook, but it's got like a really powerful Apple CPU on the inside so that you can get MacBook Pro performance on a super thin, super light MacBook that doesn't even have fans in it because that's how efficient ARM can be. And in 2020, I'm going to pronounce it ARM now and not ARM because I'm smarter. I have matured, and as Dwight would say, I am older, I am wiser. Do not mess with me. Really hoping we'll also see an update to the iMac lineup. Please, Apple, iMacs have looked the same for an entire decade now. How many Apple products have not changed in design over 10 years? That's not too common, so I'm really hoping that we can get some thinner bezel versions of the iMac. We don't need the XDR crap, just iMac Pro, thin bezels, no chin, but still powerful internals on the inside while retaining that same price point. I would love to see that. And of course, last Last but not least, I know we're all really excited for the next generation of wireless charging. When is air power coming out? It's got to be this year, doesn't it? It's going to be tomorrow. Who cares that Apple canceled it? I'm not giving up hope. Air power is coming at some point in 2020. So we should expect that. But also, yeah, obviously, 2020 iPhones, there's more and more rumors for them growing every day. There might even be a leak from on leaks by now of what the design might potentially look like. But at the current time of recording this video, the rumors are suggesting two cheaper options, two pro options. For the cheaper options, you have a 5.4 inch, very compact phone, and a larger 6.1 inch compact phone, both of which have OLED and Face ID and gesture control and everything, and both of them have dual cameras. Whereas on the pro end, you're gonna have two sizes, 6.1 inch and 6.7 inch. The largest display on an iPhone ever is coming out this year, both of which are of course OLED. Triple cameras on the back, likely with time of flight sensors, which I'm predicting will allow for portrait mode on video, which Apple's usually the king of video performance, so I'm very interested in seeing how well they can handle it. I know lots of Androids have done it before, but Apple likes to perfect things, so I'm vastly interested to see what that'll look like. Totally getting that model when it comes out because I like me the big screen. And also in a couple months, we're expected to see the iPhone SE again. No, not that small four inch iPhone five looking version, but it'll basically just be a rebranded iPhone eight, the 4.7 inch version, and it'll have an A13 chip for only 400 bucks. No 3D touch though, but will likely be very popular in demographics where flagship phones don't sell that well. This will be a very affordable and easy way for a lot of people who don't have a lot of money to obtain iOS and get into that Apple ecosystem. So potentially five new iPhones coming out this year, which I also think is a first. 
So I think there will be a lot of firsts for Apple. I'm very excited to see all the tech we get. What are you most excited for? Feel free to hit me up on Twitter or join my Discord, except I'm not here right now, but I'll be back in a couple days. And once again, big shout out to Beats DJ for making the intros and outros for this video. And I normally don't highlight this, but please take a look at this elegantly designed outro because it is now promoting our EV channel, which is doing really well right now, where we can talk more about Teslas and electric vehicles in general. Mostly Tesla though, that's the one that I find most interesting interesting in the talks channel where I'll go about vlogging my daily life as well as showing behind the scenes stuff and hanging out with friends and my trips just to get more personal with my life you can check out that channel as well also huge shout out to Randy great music we finally changed it it's taken a long time but we finally updated the music he made it himself he's awesome go check him out as well roll the outro